Hey everybody, uh, this is Charles Winchester and this calculus lesson is on limits at, uh, at infinity and asymptotes uh, at infinity as x goes to infinity. Horizontal and slant asymptotes. Okay, before I get with the notes here, right here, let's just take a look at these fractions. 1 over 1 equals 1. 1 over 2 is 0.5. 1 over 3 is 0.3. 1 over 100. Notice as um, the denominator gets larger, you guys, on these, these, these values of these fractions get smaller. 1 over 1,000 is close to zero right here. So these fractions are representing 1 over x as x approaches infinity right there. So the value is approaching zero when this happens right here. So, um, uh, so by definition, you guys, the limit as x goes to infinity of x over any x variable uh, is going to approach zero all the time. So here's some examples, you guys. So the limit as x approaches infinity on all of these right here of 7 over x cubed, it's zero. Uh, negative 3 over x squared is 0, and then uh, even, this is the uh, square root of x, which is x to the 1 half right here, so uh, this is this is still 0 right here, and then right here, this x and this x to the 5th, okay, well there's an x on top, that's no biggie, because it's going to cancel out with one of the x's down there, you still get x's down there, it's going to approach, approach 0. Okay, similarly, you guys, uh, if I have 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, uh, these are just getting bigger, you guys. So this is a this represents the limit of just x, and this limit doesn't exist because it's going to infinity, and infinity is an undefined number. So, so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, so the limit does not exist. So examples would be, you know, uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x cubed over x squared. Notice the degree in the top is bigger this time. Before it was uh, the degree on top was smaller. Okay, so x squared minus 5 over the square root of x, that's just x to the 1 half, so this is going to go to infinity. And 7 root x, that's going to go to infinity. They're going to infinity at different rates, but on all of these, uh, the limits does not exist because they go to infinity. All right, so here's the notes, you guys. Pick up your graphing calculator, and let's go ahead and graph this function f of x equals 2x uh, squared plus 4x minus 6 over 3x squared plus 2x minus 16. All right, so go ahead and plug that in your graphing calculator. And I did my best with my uh, with my uh, finger on my uh, mouse pad right here. I'm on a laptop. So uh, your graph should look something like that right there. All right, so where is this asymptote? Because your graph, it doesn't even do a dotted line. It just draws a straight line. At least mine does. I'm using a TI-83. Uh, and it draws this straight line right here. And then what's this one all about? Don't you, do you see a little invisible asymptote, especially with these end pieces when I go to negative infinity over here and when I go to positive infinity right there? Well, let's talk about that, you guys. Okay, so asymptotes happen as x goes to positive and negative infinity. So vertical asymptotes are where the denominators equal zero. So those are those green dotted lines I showed you right there. So where the denominator equals zero, if I factored that, it factors to 3x plus 8 times x minus 2, this denominator right here. And then so this is that negative 8 thirds, which is negative 2 and 2 thirds right there. Okay? And then this one, this one's pretty easy, x equals 2. Well, you can almost see that in the graph, x equals 2 right there. And if you're not getting that graph on your graphing calculator, hit your view window, you guys, and try to zoom in or zoom out or just make your new scales right there. This scales back, it looks like, uh, what, negative 6 and positive 6. So I made my x scale, my y scales to be 6 and negative 6. All right, and that'll give you a general picture of that right there. So if you're not getting it, zoom in or zoom out. All right, so if the degree in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator, then there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals whatever the reduced fraction of the leading coefficients are. So let's go back here to this guy right here. All right, so the reduced fraction of the leading coefficients, can you see the degrees are both 2 because it's x squared and x squared? So if I reduce 2x squared and 3x squared, it reduces to 2 thirds. There's this horizontal asymptote right here. Y equals 2 thirds right there. Okay, so that's what happened at that horizontal asymptote right there. It's the reduced coefficient. If the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, then there's always going to be a horizontal asymptote at Y equals 0. Okay, now this graph doesn't have it, so I don't have something to show you. And if the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator, it has to be by 1 then there's going to be a slant asymptote, and you get that from long division. And we did that in pre-calculus. All right, so sometimes graphs will cross an asymptote like this one did. It crossed that horizontal asymptote right there. Okay, and it always crosses, or not always, you guys, but sometimes it'll cross an asymptote. Uh, 
uh, especially when there's a middle part right there. And if your middle part has kitty corner graphs like this, so if it was going kitty corner graph like this, um, uh, then it would be this probably would be flip flop where this part would be down here and it would do a little S shape going up like that. If they were not kitty corner, say this uh, had my L shape over here and I had my J shape over here, say this guy was reflected up here, you'd probably get a horseshoe guy down here. Okay, and vice versa. If they were both down here, then my horseshoe would be kind of going up like that, a U-shaped graph. Okay, so sometimes they do cross. All right, so determine the slant asymptote because see this one's uh, one degree more, so it has a slant to you guys. X squared is one degree more than X. And then graph. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do long division. I got to long divide X minus 2 into 2X squared minus 3X plus 1. Okay, I'm going to go fast. I did this all at once, you guys, because you saw this in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and pre-calculus, you guys. There's long division. X times what gets me 2x squared? X times 2x gets me 2x squared. So I multiply 2x times x is 2x squared, and then 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. That's what this is right here. Then you subtract. These guys cancel. Negative 3 minus a minus 4 is negative 3 plus 4, which is 1. So there's 1x. And then I do it again x times what will get me 1x? Don't forget you slide this plus 1 down right here. x times 1 will get me this 1x. So then I multiply 1 times x. 1 times negative 2. That's where I got x minus 2. Then I subtract again. Those cancel. 1 minus minus 2 is 1 plus 2 or 3. Okay, so you start at the top and it goes 2x plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 2. So this this gets me this uh, station right here. There's my slant asymptote right there because this guy right here, I have it written down right here. Uh, as x goes to infinity, remember asymptotes are when x goes to infinity. So when x goes to infinity, this remainder stuff approaches 0 because I get 3 over x minus 2. Okay, so the graph's going to approach uh, uh, the, the this guy right there. That's my slant asymptote y equals 2x plus 1. Okay, so uh, so there's the graph right there. When you graph that, go ahead and pick up your calculator. And, if, and if, when I first did it, you guys, I only got this bottom half right there. I had to zoom out to get this top half. And notice, notice these are going by twos, you guys. So this is going way up here at 12. So you have to zoom out. And if you can't zoom out on your calculator, then use your view window and change them to like, you know, you know, negative 10, positive 10 for the x-axis, and then, I don't know, negative 15 and positive 15 for the y-axis, and that should give you enough for the picture. What's this asymptote going down right here? Remember, vertical asymptotes are when the, the new, uh, denominator equals 0, so it's at x equals 2 right there, okay? So there it is right there. All right, so limits work similarly to asymptotes, you guys. So the limit of f of x as x approaches plus or minus infinity if the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, then the limit is always zero, just like the asymptotes. If the degree in the numerator equals the degree in the denominator, then the limit is the reduced fraction of your leading coefficients. If the numerator is greater than the, uh, uh, the denominator, then the limit does not exist. All right, so let's find each limit, you guys. Okay, so here we go. We got all these limits. I'd pause this, you guys, and write these down if you're in my class. All right, so these these um, uh, are equal to each other, so it's going to be the reduced coefficient. So negative 3x over 2x is negative 3 halves. The limit is negative 3 halves. Okay, here the degree is greater in the denominator than the numerator, so the limit on this one is 0. Okay, here the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so this one is, does not exist. Okay, now here, you guys, the square root of x squared is the same as x. So these degrees are equal, you guys. Now be careful. So it's going to be the reduced coefficient right here. Whoops, I think I made a mistake. I'll tell you about it in just a second. Um, okay, so when x goes to negative uh, infinity, this is going to be positive because I square it, you guys, and then square root it. So I know this is positive right here, but this is going to be negative. Okay, so I made a mistake, so I'll tell you about it right here. I can think about it. So the, the, the limit is not negative 3 halves. It's negative 3 over the square root of 2. Sorry about that. So this is the square root of 2. There should be a little root 2 right there. Let's see if I can fix that right now. Okay, sorry about this. Let me put a little square root right there. There it is. That's, that's my answer right there. Okay. All right, got it. Okay. So that's the answer right there. Okay, so state all asymptotes and sketch the graph of this uh, uh, without using your calculator. Okay, so the asymptotes, I got a vertical at x equals negative 1, and then my horizontal is the reduced coefficients um, 2. Okay, 2x over 1x is 2. 
All right, so let's go ahead. There's my graph right there, and then I would just test a point, you guys. I'll test a, test a point on each side of the vertical asymptote. All right, so I'm going to test x equals 0. So when x equals 0, I get negative 1 over 1. I get negative 1. So I get that point right there. That tells me this graph is going to approach both these asymptotes like this right there. Okay, and then to see is it going to be a, a below or above, just test like x equals negative 2. x equals negative 2, I get negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 5 or negative 1 is 5. That's up here, so that just tells me it's going on that side right there. Okay, all right, what else do I have? Oh, yeah, okay, so the limit as x goes to infinity of sine and cosine. Remember, sine of x goes like this. It oscillates between 1 and negative 1, 1 and negative 1. Same with cosine. So this is going to be between 1 and negative 1 inclusively. So is this one, negative 1 and negative 1 for infinite, infinite, infinite. But as x gets larger and larger, this is always going to be some number over an infinity. So this is approaching 0 on both of these, you guys. So when you see something like that, that's 0. Okay, if you're in my class, I would assign that for your homework. And then don't look at the directions in the book for 53 and 59. Use these as your directions right there.